Hello everyone, thank you for joining online today. Welcome to our live, welcome to our live today. Welcome to our live, how are you doing? Hey, if you're just joining, please introduce yourself, tell me your name, tell me where you're joining from, introduce yourself, tell me your name, tell me where you're joining from. Thank you, thank you for joining this live. This live, we're going to talk about how to overcome negative and, you know, and just draining emotions. So what does that look like? A lot of people are in a state, their emotional state is that they are frustrated, they are overwhelmed. Some people, this has really affected their life. They just don't have a drive again. Some people, it has affected their relationship. It has affected their marriage. They just find themselves in a place where they are continually unhappy. If you're dealing with depression, if you feel as if you're overwhelmed, this life is for you. One of the things you can do is to share with other friends of yours and we're going to get into it. And two things are going to happen today that is very special. Number one, I will get the opportunity to ask, you can ask your questions. Then number two, if you want to go live with me for a personal time, I would invite you to go live with me. And we're going to hear the amazing story of Vicky James as she shares her own personal breakthrough. And from one of my other friends also that also is sharing her own breakthrough story. So what you can do right now is that introduce yourself. Tell me your name. Tell me where you're joining from. Thank you for joining. I have... Um, I have my friends from South Africa joining. All of you in South Africa, how are you doing? Um, I have people joining from Ikorodu, from Lagos, from Akure. Where are those from the UK? Where are those from Canada? Where are those from Europe? Where are those from the Middle East, from Dubai, from Saudi Arabia, from Kuwait? Welcome, 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 welcome. I really thank you for joining from the UK. It's nice to see you here. And um, thank you for joining from Dublin. Rosemary from, Mer um, from Scotland, thank you for joining. What you can type in the in the chat box is this. Just chat, type this with me. Just say, Grace, 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 this is my story. Just type that and say, Grace, 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 this is my story. Just type that quickly and say, Grace, 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 this is my story. Grace, 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 this is my story. Just type, Grace, 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 this is my story. If you want to share the link, go ahead and share with all your friends and tell them that we are online. All right. So, you know, Ayomide from Baltimore, you're welcome. And um, Upper Mipo from Lagos, you are welcome. Grace, Grace, Grace is my story. Okay, so let's get into this quickly. Let's get into this quickly. So the question is this. This is the big question. Um, a lot of people are in an emotional state that hinders them from going forward. And I will explain what that means. So because some people have tried and tried and tried in their business, and their business has not really gone the way they want, you know what happens? They get frustrated and they become paralyzed. Some people, it's not their business, it's relationship. Just because of the bad experience they had while growing up, or the bad experience they saw with their brother, with their sister in their marriage, the same experience has kind of, you know, affected them and they don't expect big things. You will hear people say things like, I don't think someone can love me. You will hear people say that relationships don't work for me. You will hear people say that, you know, um, I don't believe that anybody can take care of me. You hear some, some people say different kind of things. But what I'm saying is, is the reason why you have to change your emotional state is this. This is what I'm saying. So if your emotional state is negative, your life experiences will be impacted and they will be negative. I'll give you just one story or illustration how this changes your emotional state. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are at work and you are at work that day. You made an extra hundred million, maybe an one million dollars for the company you made for. You made that in profit. Your partner walks into your office, sit down at your desk and be like, you are a phenomenal staff. We're glad to have you. As a matter of fact, we are adding an extra $50,000 to your salary in bonus. We are giving you an extra car and you're getting triple promotion. And when that happened, you walked home. You actually went home that day. And as you got home, you saw your little niece that was staying with you and with the mom. As you stepped out, the niece suddenly dropped the plate that was it was holding with food. And the plate broke in pieces and the food spilled away. What will be your reaction? I'm sure that your reaction will be something like, you know what, this doesn't matter, this is nothing, and all of those kind of things. And that will be your reaction. But let's paint another scenario. Another scenario is this, and this is very powerful, because today you're going to hear some of the things that will change your life forever. And another scenario is this. You are at work, your boss came and told you that you are in low performance and you'll be fired. Because and that particularly, you have lost in transaction a $1 million deal for your business. They queried you, you had a tough conversation with your boss and your partner and the, your, your business partner says, we're going to just sack you. You went home that day and the same niece drops the plates of food. And when he drops the plates of food, what will you say? You'll be like, oh my God, what is going on? 
your reaction over the child will be different because it will be very negative because of where you are. Look at this. The thing is that the same story happened two times, but your reactions were different. Why? Because your emotional state determined how you react. If you don't guide your emotional state, you will find yourself reacting negatively. You keep thinking it's life. Meanwhile, in the truth, it is your emotional state that is causing you to react this way. So what we have to fix is this. You have to fix your emotional state. One principle you must realize is this. You must realize this. There are things in life. There are things you can control and there are things you cannot control. I'll give an example. I cannot control if you join this life. I can't control if you make... I can tell you, put a comment in the chat box. But I cannot control if you do that. Why am I saying this? The moment I focus on the things I cannot control, I will be depressed. I should only focus on things within my control. The reason, so why are on people not happy? One of the fundamental reasons why a lot of people are happy are unhappy is this. This is why they're depressed, this is why they're overwhelmed. They are trying to control what they cannot control. So you are trying to control the way your parents will behave to you. You are trying to control the way your wife will behave to you. You are trying to control the way people will behave to you. Focusing on those things would eventually make you unhappy. What you can control is what your response will be. What your own, what is my response? That is what it means to focus on what you can control. Hallelujah. I'm going to, I'm going to ask Vicky James to join me and we're going to take this conversation to the next level. The, you know, one of the very renowned, you know, very, very, you know, um, I'm fine. Vicky, how are you? Good evening. By the way, you look amazing. <laughs> By the way, you look amazing. You always look amazing. How is work? How work is fine, sir. How is work? So tell me, how did you start your fashion business? What uh, has it grown into right now? Okay. So uh, I guess. I guess I started my fashion business um, through, uh, my fashion business was motivated by the fact that I was born into, my mom was a fashion designer, my mom was a tailor, let me not say she was a fashion designer, she was a tailor. So I already, I mean, God, God gave me that talent in fashion, but I did not know that I was going to go into fashion. But because my mom was a tailor and I was around her, you know, doing fashion and it, it helped me grow um my talent into like it helped me grow passion for the talent and you know you, you, you know what, what you're saying is powerful because sometimes what you need for for a breakthrough is something within yeah. your space and you keep overlooking it you know because sometimes people think that god so what you need for a breakthrough sometimes is something within your space you know you know let me just put it here there are people that look in that delayed marriage to me Meanwhile, the person they're meant to marry is someone that is close to them, but they friend zone the person. They friend zone the person because they're looking for something that is grand, something that is phenomenal. They're looking for all yes, this sir. drama from Hollywood. And you yeah. said that this great business that you are known for globally started from something from your mom. You took that small seed from your mom, you yes, worked sir. on it and grew it. So let's get into the topic of today. You, you know, a lot of young ladies and young guys look up to you as a mentor. What have you noticed? What emotional problems have you noticed that people have? And let's discuss that. When you were growing up, right now in your life, what what emotional problems have people uh, have? What have you noticed? I think it's usually like the fear of failure. I think it's usually the fear of okay. failure because when I went into fashion, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, Pastor B. Like throughout my years of even when I know that when I knew that I had the talent in fashion, I knew that I, I made up my mind I wasn't going to be a fashion designer because I felt like it was a poor man's job because growing up, we were not, we were poor. My mom was a tailor, so I felt like it was a poor man's job because if there was money in the job, maybe we would have been doing better. So I was looking into like other things. So I did a lot of things growing up. So when I decided to go into fashion, I was not sure that I was going to, it was going to be what it is today. But... I guess I had the fear for a long time, but the moment that I decided to break through that fear and pursue it. How, okay. How did you break so, through the fear? 
uh, I started fashion when I moved back to Lagos from Akwaibom. I traveled to Akwaibom for school. And when I got back, I, want, I was going to be continuous. I was doing makeup in Akwaibom, so I was going to face makeup. But when I got back, a lot of the people I knew were already into makeup. So I felt like, okay, I would not really get a lot of referrals through this. So I, needed to, uh, so I, I applied wisdom into it and I, and I pursued fashion. And how I broke it was basically me just saying that what's what is the worst thing that can happen so, 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 so what, what you're saying is this yeah and, and please allow me to always interrupt yes. you because i'm trying to bring out the principles in the story let me tell you how you broke it because I, you're saying it but i know the principle so you yes, break sir. fear by taking action exactly all of you that did let me tell you something all of you that deal with the fear of failure there's no magic drug you're going to take you are going to break fear by taking massive action. I want someone to write down in the comment section. You break the fear of failure by taking not just action, by taking massive action. So I'll say, if I take the action and it doesn't work, exactly. what do I do? You learn and you you learn what is not working and you take a better action. Tell me the story. Does this does this story come to your mind? Do you remember something be, about Because this? I mean, like I said, when I started, I wasn't. You know, I like I said, I already had the mindset that. This was this job is for poor people. This job, people don't make money from it. So when I started, I did not make money from it. But I think what kept me going was the fact that I did not allow my fears or my mindset stop what I was envisioning. I didn't allow my mind to stop my vision. This is very powerful. This is very powerful. And this is the thing. How do you break fear? By taking yes. massive action. When it does not work out, what do you do? You step back and look at it and say, why didn't it work? And you reapply yourself. The major reason why people ultimately fail is this. When it does yes. not work, then they stop trying. So when they date one, two times, <laughs> it doesn't work. What do they do? They say, they, they say, I've tried everything. Yeah. That's what they keep saying. They keep mm -hmm. saying the same thing. They keep saying, I've tried everything. Honey, you've That's not tried everything. You've just dated two times. You, you know, how can you say you've tried everything? You've just had two businesses. You say you've tried everything. No, no, no. The key thing is this. How do you break fear? By taking massive action. And listen, when it doesn't work, what do you do? You learn what works and reapply yourself over and over and over again until you see the success. Until you see the success. Okay. If you have any questions, type in the comment section. If you have questions, I want you to type in the comment section. I want to be able to ask you. I want to be able to answer your questions today. So, 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 so we've spoken about the fear of failure. Let's talk about some emotion people feel. Hurt, pain, some stories you've heard about from your friends. And people say, these are the emotions I'm going through. And, you know, in your own life, when was the biggest time when you were emotionally hurt or drained hmm. in your own life, Vicky? Um, Pastor B, I feel like for, for women... The, the area where we're always very, very, where we are most emotionally drained and um, frustrated is usually in the area of relationships. That's like the greatest, like wow. if, you're, if we're judging based on like percentage, it would be in the area of relationship for we ladies. And I think the, I think the, the, the worst time in my life where I was really, really emotionally drained that I would say, that I almost went into depression because when people say that oh I was depressed I I'm I'm not usually not able to relate to it because I've known God since I was really young so I've known God to be my my source and my strength so but the time where I knew I almost went into depression was when uh when someone broke my heart and I was I was in a in a very bad relationship and I was holding on to this relationship that God has shown me so many times different in different ways different signs that I had to come out of that relationship I was there I gave my all I I I I in fact it was I almost dropped out of school at that time because of this relationship and it let, let me ask a question ah, at that point I felt, how did you feel I felt like uh, less of myself I felt like it was the first time in my and the only time I felt very, like I was, very, like I was nothing. So first of all, you felt disappointed yes. and you felt you were not enough. 
Okay, so you felt disappointed. You felt, I, I, I want to tell this. Did you feel uh, inadequate? Yes, I did. Because I was now looking at, is it that I am not, is there a way I'm supposed to be that I am not? Okay, so you felt, so first of all, let's talk about that. Because on this call today, there are people that feel inadequate. There are people, inadequate, that's the thing that I'm not enough. And let me tell you something. One of the biggest, you know, feeling people have is that feeling of not being enough. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So first of all, if you're going through an emotional time, let's say if some emotion is going through your body, one of the things you have to do is that you have to identify the emotion. The reason why is this, whatever you deny, you yeah. cannot change. Oh my God. Whatever you deny, you cannot change. So if you feel disappointed, you need to, some of you are going through things and you cannot articulate the emotions you go through. And once you cannot articulate the emotions you go through, you yes. cannot solve it. So the first thing is, so let me tell you what people do with emotions. They run away from it. So people avoid their emotions. People, people avoid their emotions. People medicate their emotions. Medicate means that they do something in the short term that makes them feel good. So when they feel frustrated, they go ahead and get drunk. Yes. They go ahead and use tramadol. They go ahead and use cocaine. They yes. go ahead and look for a person to sleep with. You know, they look, they're looking for shortcuts. Listen, the challenge is that whenever you do that, mm. that thing keeps coming back. Because the roots of that emotional trauma has not That's been solved. So, you know, the first thing, and you said that you felt inadequate. And let me tell you something. But the reason why you felt that way is because you chose to identify. So people in the comment section, I want to put in the comment section, what emotional feelings do you feel at your worst? Oh, sorry, let me say this way. What are the emotional signals you feel at your worst state? So Vicky has said that, number one, she felt inadequate. She felt disappointed. She felt inadequate. She felt disappointed. Okay, so how do you change your emotional state? The first thing is this identify the emotions that you're feeling. So it can be, for example, you can feel hurts. You can feel hurt. You can feel anger. You can feel fear. So the question is, is that what emotional, what emotional feeling? So Vicky, let's go back to your, to you, where you were, where this boy, where this boy was maltreating you and you were holding on with your life and he would say nasty thing to you. He will not treat you right. And you were like, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to love till I die. I will not live here. Kill me or not. I will love you forever. And you are doing all of those things. You know, so, so, someone said, I feel stagnated. Thank you for saying that. Someone said, I feel sad. So how, someone said, I feel unloved. Okay, good. Someone said, I feel aggression. Wow. Wow. But, Those are very powerful feelings you're feeling. But, someone said, I feel anxious. I think I okay. Felt yes. So. Betrayed. I think I felt. Because I, I wouldn't you, say I felt stagnation because as I then, I was trying for myself. I was doing well. At least I was one of those girls that used to give money to their boyfriends. So. Okay. So the thing is that the betrayer meant, what, so was it more of anger? Or it, was it was more of regrets. Regrets. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to come to that because. So, so the first thing I want to see is this. I want to see something that we're able to narrow what you feel. Once you see, you cannot change what you deny. So once I feel embarrassed. So for her, you know, and when you get this emotional feeling, you need to ask yourself, what is this telling me? I'm going to tell you what the feeling of regret means. Regret is an emotional feeling. It's an emotional feeling that says certain standard has been violated in your life. Is that how you feel? Uh, I think so. Central mm -hmm. standard means that the way you're meant to be treated, exactly. responded to, appreciated, has yes, not happened Very in your correct. life. Am I correct? So, so you know, you know why you feel that way. So when you know that the emotional signal I feel is regret, then that certain standard are violated. So what that emotion is telling you is this: because the thing is that most people think emotions are bad. No, emotions most and carry a positive message. So what, when you feel the feeling of regret, what you're saying is this, my standards have been violated. What he's saying is this, I must do something so that these standards are not violated again.
That's what the motion is telling you. But unfortunately, you chose to stay in that relationship and your standards were violated over and over and over and yes. over and over and yes, over sir. until you became frustrated. Okay, let's take some emotions that people are typing in the box. Someone says this, someone says, I feel frustrated. What does frustration mean? This is very powerful. Frustration is what, listen, so if you feel frustrated, frustration means this. This is very powerful. I want everyone to get it. Frustration means this, that what you are doing to achieve the results you want is not working and you have to do something else. The, the emotional feeling of frustration. So if you're frustrated about your life, maybe because you're stagnated, you're frustrated about your marriage, you're frustrated about your singlehood, you're frustrated about your job, what you're really saying is this, and this is very powerful, that what I'm doing, the approach, the way I'm doing, uh, it's not working. Mm -hmm. and I have to try something else. But because people don't pay attention to their emotion, what they do is like what you're doing. They keep doing the same thing. And the simple definition of insanity is this, to keep doing the same thing and expect what a different kind yes, of results. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, someone says I'm exhausted. The same thing with exhaustion. Once you're exhausted, the same thing. Exhaustion, frustration, a similar emotion. Why? The reason why you're exhausted is this. You are pushing hard in a certain way and it's telling you it's not working. It's not working. And instead of you to change what is not working, you keep pushing hard, pushing hard, pushing hard until you get to a place where you feel drained. So the drain is because you are not expressing, you are not changing the way you are dealing with this. You are not changing the way you are dealing with this. You know, you know, you are not changing the way you are dealing with this. And, and, and this is very powerful for someone. So frustration means that what you're doing isn't working and you need to change your approach so that you can achieve the goal. I want to say that's it. The emotion of frustration means what you are doing isn't working and you need to change the approach for you to achieve the goal. Stress is a sign of frustration. So when you are stressed, it is a sign of frustration. Drain is a sign of frustration. So someone says, when I'm frustrated, what do I do? You need to sit down. And when you sit down, say to yourself, what do you say to yourself? Wow, there's this thing I'm doing. And it's not, for, for example, right now, you were in a relationship, you were being maltreated. And instead of you to step up because the standard was not being met, you were giving much more. Tell me some things you were doing. Tell, tell me some of the stupidest things you ever did in that relationship. <laughs> some of the crazy things. You know, I love the way you're laughing at yourself because you knew that you were acting crazy. You knew that you were crazy, crazy, crazy. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Ah, Will you ever do those things never, again? Never, ever again. <laughs> hey, never I reject again. it for you. Ah, I reject I it for you. you. I reject I it for you. My you. Oh, my, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Someone write Shaggy. Someone write Shaggy. Vicky said, I saw Shaggy. Hey, hey. hmm. On my own, if I want to come to Lagos, I was in a quiet bomb. If I want to come to Lagos from a quiet bomb, I, I use flights. Because as I did, God had already started blessing this small, small hand work. So I use flights. But because of this boy, because of love, I entered bus, night bus, came to Lagos, went to Lagos Island with his mother, stopped. Went back to our Bible, set up a store for him. After the sort store was set up, as... hold on. You shop for the for, for him. He, he, he wanted to, I wanted him to start a business. So I said I was going to go to Lagos for him. Go... Yeah, yeah. You supply yes, I will capital. Support my own sweat. My God. I came to Lagos. Yes. Sir. You were a student to work, you know. You were a student working by the side. The small money. This is you that your mother did not have money. Oh. Your mother the was funny. The worst one of it all was that the, before I was going to yeah. leave with boss to Lagos, I checked his phone and he was already inviting his ex to come and visit him as I'm leaving. But I began My goodness. To yes. they, they lied to me and apologized and said if they were just playing along with her that they were just joking. I still forgave and came to Lagos with boss. But um, See, were you stupid? Were you stupid? Ah, or I you couldn't believe fool. the fact? <laughs> you were. <laughs> ah, but the 
Bill. Hmm. I came back, opens the store. Pastor Bill, do you know that the store was set up in New York? It was a big unisex salon in New York because I was a, I was I was making hair, I was doing makeup, I was doing a lot of things in school. So I had a lot of customers on my own that I would have opened store for my own self. But I opened it for him. Pastor Bill, do you know that when the store was open? He even told me that, oh, when you are making air, why don't you take a certain percentage? I said, no, I'm doing it for love. <laughs> I did not take nothing. I made money for him. At the end of the day, what did he do? He started bringing some girls to this. I'll be walking, oh, he'll come with like two girls. They'll be outside with him, playing with him, touching him. When I want to say something, he'll say, no, they're just his friends, that they are small girls, that the girl is like 17 or 18, that he's trying to work on her, that she's a lesbian. He's trying to amend her. Mm. Yes, so, so he has he came cancel cancel of Pastor B. I will now go to the house and cook. These same girls will come to the house and I will feed, I will put food for them to eat. Oh, wow. You, 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 you were really stupid, stupid, I have to say. Ha! PhD stupidity. No, 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 no. Sincerely, PhD stupidity. This is a classic story of stupidity. The worst one is that the house. The Hello, house. Julian. Hello, Julian. Hello, Lolade. Hello, Sharon. The worst one is that the house he was staying, I was the one that went to look for the, the house for him. I was the one that went to the agent, set up the whole house. Uh, I, I support Did you pay the rent? Supports. It's support through love. Pastor <laughs> 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 B, do you know that there was a day I went to that house and that is ex. After he lied to me that he was that in his, in his working place, they said they should stay at the guest house for one week. Meanwhile, he was in the house with his ex. Ah, I, and they were doing Kerry. I don't know, Pastor B. When I went there, I went there to fight. Ah, my God. When I went there, they used love to blind my eyes. Pastor B, me, they, 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 they explained it him. away. That, me, that, that I'm the one that said. Let me ask you a question. Maybe this question will help. Why, Vicky, what was your state that made you do all of that? Why did you do it? Why were you looking away? I, I don't think it's love. There's something that made you because you were literally abused and you stayed there. Why did you stay there? And the reason I'm saying so is that there's some people that are going through abuse right now and they're struggling to come out of it. And if we can tap into your story, maybe we can help some guys or some ladies that are going through abuse. Maybe I felt like he was the best person I could find. Why did you feel that way? Well, how can I explain? I don't know. But because because was it was it that you were afraid you'll find you'll not find? Oh, of course, else? I knew I would find someone else. But were you afraid that were you afraid of being alone? Were you afraid that you'll not find someone that would love you the way he would love you, or he loved you? I think so. Be what do you think? Because, so? Pastor B, before him, I used to be the kind of person that yeah. loved to go out with older people. And yeah. I tried to go out with, yeah. I tried to, and he was the first younger person out of every other person I had dated. He was the first younger person I, I, I went out with. So I guess I felt like this was it. Because, I mean, the older people, I thought that, oh, older people are more mature, older people are, are better than younger people, but then it was not the case. And, Pastor B, do you know the funny thing? The funny thing is that when I, when I met this, me. this guy, how I met him was that I was a born-again Christian. In fact, I broke up with the old, older guy I was dating because I said I wanted a relationship where we practice premarital sex, where we don't practice this premarital sex and because of that the, the older guy was now misbehaving I broke up with him because of that so I could face my relationship with God how I started dating this boy was me that carried my hand to go and win a soul for Christ and I was now one into the world I went to win a soul for Christ though that was how I started. He played along for the first three to four months. 
He agreed to no premarital sex. He was the best. He was calling me to church every Sunday, every Wednesday. His friends told me, Vicky, you think you can change, change him? I said I would change him. And it was like that for three. In my mind, I was like, I have found the man of my dreams. The one that wants mm, to that wants him to God with me. That's how small, 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 small. Small, 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 small from babe is just hug. Babe is just romance. Babe is just this. Before I knew it, I started going to the club. Before I knew it, I stopped going to church. Before I knew it, Pastor B, it was the worst stage of my life. It was the worst. And at the end of the day, his friends told me, I told you so. He is not the kind of person that you, I mean, it's, it's not like it's not possible for one to, I mean, pull someone to Christ. But I guess I was not very mature yet. I... Let, me, let me help you by saying this. You don't take someone to the altar, A-L-T-A-R, to alter them, A-L-T-E-R. You don't take someone to the altar to alter them. Nobody can change another person. It's the, that is the work of the, one of the traps that a lot of ladies fall into is a trap that I can change him. One of the traps a lot of men fall into is a trap that I can change that. That is a big lie. If you can change, nobody can change another person. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. But let's go back to the issue of the emotion. So the reason why you stayed in this abusive relationship was because of fear that you will not find someone else yes, that will sir. not be the same way. I you, you will not find someone else. And, and someone said, what's wrong with dating an older man? You know, Vicky did not say she broke up with the older man because he was older. She broke up because it was not just older, but it was also a sinful relationship. It was not a godly relationship. That's why she broke up from that relationship. So, but the reason, and, and the reason I'm saying so to you is that a lot of you are held bound in the wrong relationship. And the reason why you are held bound is this, because you're afraid. You're afraid that if I break up, will I find someone else? If I break up, can someone else love me? Where, can, where, where will I start from? Who will take care of me? But what you do is that, you know, you will put yourself in a state where you will be eventually abused, where yeah, you will I, be. And then love, you want to say something Another reason why it was so hard for me to pull out of that relationship was because uh, I was thinking about what people would say. Because a lot of people knew about our relationship. A lot of people warned me against going into a relationship with him. But because I was already deep rooted in the relationship, I was bothered that, oh, when we break up, people will laugh at me. So, so yeah. you are afraid of people's opinions, right? Oh, wow. And, and you know, that always happens to people that are leadership material. Because leadership materials are here to think about what people think. And so, therefore, they have the tendency to stay in the relationship for a long time. You know, so the question that how did you eventually deal with it? How did you come out of mm. it? Yeah. Okay, so possibly I think I got to a place where I think everyone has a limit of what they can take in life. What changed? This I want to ask you. So you were in the place of fear. How did you move from a place of fear? What changed? Like what? Are, this has changed. What changed? You were in the place of fear that I, if I leave this guy, this will never happen. I must admit that I don't care. This is too much. I'm leaving right now. What change? What change? Was it one thing? Was it a series of things? Most of the time, it's one thing that's going to trigger it. It's going to be other things that build up. But yeah, it's one I, thing I that think triggers it. what triggered it was the day that he actually hit me. Because uh -huh. that was what, that was the that's end. It. I knew that that was. And, 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 and the thing is, let me tell you something. If you're in the wrong relationship, I want to go out. I want to leave the place. I want, I'll tell you how to leave today. If you are going to break through, there must be a change in your belief. But a change in your belief is always mm. triggered by pain. A change, most of the time, people need to change, but they need a trigger. So most of the time, what you're waiting for, you will eventually change, but it's a trigger you're waiting for. For Vicky here, she got to a point where the abuse was not verbal, was not emotional. Yeah. It jumped from emotional to verbal, then turned to physical abuse. And as soon as she got to physical abuse, she said, that's it. I'm not that doing this again. That's it. I'm not doing it. So I'm saying this to you. Because some people are like, 
I, I can't just help myself. I'm just here. I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't know. You know, this is what the Bible says. I, I don't know if you read this in the Bible. I said this in church recently. You know, you know, I'm going to talk about feminism and masculinity. We're just going to talk about this. We, that beautiful video you shared that went viral. You know, one of, the, one of the powerful things, which is very powerful, one of the powerful things is this. If change is going to happen, you're going to get to the point in your life where pain will trigger True, sir. change. Pain will trigger change. And, as, and this is what the Bible said about Esau. He said, Esau, he said, your brother, he said, your brother Jacob would always be your Lord. He said, but the moment you get mm -hmm. sick and tired of it, you will break it. So the reason why you cannot make that emotional switch is that your, your pain is not enough. Let me quickly address something very powerful here. There are many people that are hurting, that are enough for forgiveness, that are going through a pouch, are going through a very dark season. And let me tell you, you're saying that I don't know what to do to get out of this place of depression. I don't know what to do to get out of frustration. You know why you're, you know why you're in that state? You don't have a bigger pain than what you're experiencing. Once you have a bigger pain than what you're experiencing, you will jump out of it. There, there's a story of a lady that, um, you know, the husband died. She was young, had two children. And every day the woman will cry and cry and cry. And the kids were five and seven, will cry and cry and cry and cry and say she wants to die, she wants to die, she wants to die. Guess what happened? The, the one day, the woman saw the seven-year-old child write a suicide note to the mom and said, one day I'm going to kill myself because my father died and my mother can't take it. She wants to kill herself. I'm going to kill myself. The day the mother saw that note, everything changed about how she felt. Someone says, what changed? When she saw a bigger pain than the current pain she was experiencing, her state changed. Everything about her changed. And that's what I'm saying to you right now. A lot of you want to change. Look for that thing that will trigger you to the next level. So, so Vicky, we, we, we had this story, you know, you were sharing this story with us in church. And listen to me, um, firstly, two things. You need to, if you, if you connect it to this, we're having a crusade in the battle. Here, NLP prayer conference in the battle, you need to attend. It's going to be a powerful night of miracles. Good Friday. Good Friday. You're going to have to attend. The second thing is that, if you're struggling with your relationships, I wanted to go ahead and watch my series on YouTube dealing, dealing with relationship frustration and exhaustion. Powerful, How has the series been powerful, for you? Pastor B. Powerful, life changing, and uh, uh, I mean, it... did you did you cry? Did you find yourself crying or moved to tears in any of the services? Uh, or almost think... moved to tears in the services? <laughs> I think the day I actually cried it was the day. Uh, the last two Sundays, the lady that spoke about her being married for eight years, um, being in a relationship for eight years, married the man, and then she left the marriage, or the marriage broke up because of the family of the man. That she had it, she has a child. Yeah. Yes, lady, lady yeah. encouraged, and she yeah. wore black yeah. and white to church on Sunday. <laughs> uh, no, no, it, it was. In fact, the truth is that if I have time, I want to bring her on. If I don't bring her on today. Maybe to Tuesday or Thursday, I'm going to do another life and bring her on. She's radically changed. The counselor that is helping her out says, I cannot believe the depth of pain she went through and where she has been. But you can watch the messages for free. Go and watch them. Before they're taken out of YouTube, go and watch them on YouTube. Dealing with relationship exhaustion and frustration. But in, in, in the service, you were sharing with us how you, you finally had to receive. You, you, you want to run us through that area again? Because some people just don't, think, yeah. don't know what's so, going on. Yes. Uh, yes, I said that. Growing up, I have, or in fact, right now, I think I still have that mindset that, well, anymore, so, uh, yeah. up until the Sunday where you advised on how women should be yeah. more feminine and should be, you know, humble enough to ask and be ready to receive, open to receive. Yes. So I've had the mindset that um, I was made or created to only be a giver and not a receiver. And it has been like that for me for yeah. a and, and, and when you're dating people, oh. you never date people that give to you. You always date people like this guy yes. we spoke about. You're always the yes. one giving to them. Oh, wow. And, and one of the things we began to examine always, because, is that... Yeah, you want to say something? Even when you were speaking about how mm -hmm. the, your pain would trigger your change, um, I remember that the... The, the last person I date, dated before my business started growing until like it grew to the level where it, it is today was triggered by that relationship. B 
because I was, I was, I felt so many type of way about myself in that relationship because it was the time I just moved back to Lagos and it was, and this person did not really, it was as if this person did not really have an idea of the kind of person that I am because uh, he couldn't see what I had had inside of me he couldn't see like the, the future ahead of me so he felt like i was going to be a liability to him and it was not as if yes he was not as if he oh, was wow. giving to me because before you know it nothing has happened he will say he wants a break you want a break for what nothing before you know it he will complain before you know it he will complain that oh you are eating too late in the night oh he's not the one who will get married you become fat what is all these complaints i will go and check your dm you are talking to fat girls on the on, on, on instagram but you are complaining that me that i'm size eight that i should not eat at night that i should not drink juice when i'm eating rice pastor b we can literally have toxic fights just because i'm eating rice and drinking juice beside the rice i think I, i'm not even kidding it was very and I, and i had to start looking at what the problem problem was and i realized that he felt like, because I just moved back to Lagos, I wasn't really doing anything. I was still figuring out my life. He felt like I was going to be a liability to him. He wanted a girl that was already independent and was already something. So I, I think when I came back, I spent some days in his house. Then when he said he wanted a break, I went back to my house. I remember that that weekend when I went back home, I wasn't, I, for like three, three nights, I was always on the bed thinking and crying. My mom was on the bed too. I never told her anything happened. But the day I knew that for the three nights, I did not sleep. My mother too did not sleep because she knew I was in pain. She went to the parlor and she started praying and crying and she was praying for me. That was when it dawned on me that my mom was actually awake three nights with me. And the next day, and the next day she asked me what's the wow. problem i told her everything she even called him and asked him that what is the problem why are you treating my daughter like this if you don't want to be with that this is that it was that day that prayer of my mom that night that woke me up and i was like on top of which man how and it was just i just went to god in prayer and god just reminded me of what he has put inside of me he says that the problem that is at, that the plans of good are not of evil i i i just took it up upon myself i told my mom mommy i want to start fashion i want to start using your palo that was what that was what triggered me and oh, 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 hold on hold on hold on <laughs> hold on vicky you're going too fast they're saying too many powerful <laughs> things here the first thing you said is this and that's what i said if you are grieving or hurting and you find it let me say that again if you're grieving or hurting and you find it difficult to come out it's because you have not found pain that is greater than your grief or hurt. When you find pain that is greater than your grief or hurt, you will jump out of it. The Bible speaks of the fourth leper. The Bible says when they became hungry, what did they do? They said that there's food here. They may kill us. Mm -hmm. But if we stay here, hunger will kill you. So when you find something that is greater than your grief or hurt, you will find yourself coming out of it. The second thing I want to say, is, which is very powerful, is that it was in your pain yes, that your business absolutely. started. Yes or no? You know what I'm saying that to you? Sometimes mm. the gold is in the mess. Uh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sometimes someone needs to type that down. Sometimes the yes, gold sir. is in the mess. You know, sometimes the gold is in your pain. Sometimes the gold is in your hurt. That's why we don't run away from hurt. That's why we don't, because sometimes the message is yes. in your mess. Yes. You, you see, let me tell you something. The gold is in the mess. The gold is in the hurt. The message is in the mess. Sometimes, and that's why sometimes what triggers you is the pain. And, and I'm saying so to someone here. There are people listening to me. You don't want to face your pain. You don't want to face your hurt. You don't want to discuss with anybody. You want to avoid it. You want to drink about it. You want to party. You want to get drunk. You want to get high. You want to just trauma a door. You want to have a 25 girlfriend and sleep around. The thing is that if you run away from your pain, you will never solve it. Your pain will be bad. You will never find the message, the gold in the message, which is what so someone put in the comment section. How they put it there? That sometimes the gold is in the mess. Sometimes the gold is in the mess. Help me put it. That the gold is in the mess. Sometimes the gold is in the mess. Sometimes the gold is in the mess, which is very powerful. 
which is very powerful. Let's begin to conclude this. Let's begin to go. If you need to share this with your friends or tag someone, please go ahead. Let's make this viral. Let's share with all of our friends so that it can go viral. You know, we're dropping so much powerful things here. It will be stored. You can go back and watch it. The gold is in the mess. So the question is this. So you found that, so you were describing how you're always in relationships before now when you do not receive. And one of the things I said to you is that I think that, you know, the challenge, because you gave a much bigger story, was because you've not grown in your femininity. You know, you've not been able to develop there. And um, what's your response to that? Have you been able to embrace your feminist before uh, now? Have really. you been able to do that? Not really. A and the reason why is that because as a young child, your dad died in an early age and your mom had to hustle yes. and you also had to hustle. So because everybody, everybody may not know this, mm -hmm. everybody has a masculinity and a femininity. And sometimes in life, we, so sometimes you see some guys that yeah. develop their femininity yeah. over their masculinity. So you see some guys that always want people to lead them. They can't take direction. They, they want support and all of those kind of things. But also you see some girls that are too <laughs> strong to be loved. Uh, all right. Today, so much gems, so much gems, so much gems. Some ladies are too strong to be loved. And, and the reason why is that they've grown so much in their masculinity. You know, sometimes people that are very close to their mm. father, they take it from their father. Sometimes people that don't have a father, they develop that as a different medicine to fight life. And they are too strong. They are too strong. I, I know guys and ladies, I feel as if life is a battle, so they are always fighting. So tell me, you know, t tell me the, some ways you noticed that you were not feminine. You didn't discover, you didn't discover your femininity and you discover your masculinity. Tell me some of the things maybe you, you were told, you noticed about yourself, your ex told you. Uh, tell me some of the things. Well... I, I always want to win an argument. I mm. um, always want to win an argument. And when I want to do things, I, ha I, I always have to get what I want. Okay, good. But, 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 but that's not really wrong because that's been driven. But let me give you an example you told me in the last meeting where you told me that you mm -hmm. love to take care of yourself and you don't even think of anybody to take care of you. Everybody must take care of themselves. But as, when you grow your femininity, there's a part of your femi femininity that, you know, craves for someone to take care of you. So you were telling me about you and your boyfriend that sometimes, you know, you're hungry. And, you know, when you're hungry, your boyfriend even calls you and say, because you have this caring guy in your life right now, and say, you're hungry, I want to get mm -hmm. you food. Don't worry, I've already ordered food for myself. And, and the reason why is that, you know, when you when you grow your femininity, you know what you want to do? You want someone to open the door for you. You want someone to ask you, how are you doing? You want someone to take you out. It's not as if you can't do this mm -hmm. for yourself. That would be another extreme. But just, just being feminine, because being feminine means that you kind of love someone. To, you love to be taken care of, which is beautiful, which is beautiful. Now, if a guy is that way, sometimes that is awkward. If a guy wants, you know, <laughs> you know, wants, <laughs> wants, you know, that, that's actually awkward. You know, and the reason why people are masculine or feminine is the side of our life we choose to develop. That's the key thing. Is the side of our life we choose to develop. You know, and development depends on on how we were brought up. For you now, you had to hustle. So, what was needed when you were young was that masculine nature to be able to fight through life and be huge and this and this, and you became very aggressive. You became very aggressive, right? At some point you might have reduced this yes, but at some, some point, point yes, we are very so life is a bit life yeah. is softer now so no yes. need exactly so, so 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 this time you say life is softer is you working on your femininity because you say that the lady you know just working on life is softer you you give me some examples of areas you have to make adjustments or how you are still okay. struggling right uh, now um yeah. areas i have to make adjustments okay so I know that as a woman, when you in if you if you if you are feminine, you would always want to listen to or hear from a man. And there are times where if I want to make decisions, I make my decisions after I finish making the decisions before we even share it with my partner. Because oh wow, got it covered. Oh. So oh, wow. why do I have to tell you first? Because in the area of finance, if it's financially, I I would handle it. So I would finish making the. 
can, can, can I ask a personal question? You know that ladies are masculine in nature. They love to wear more. They love to wear more trousers than dressed. Was that you, know, you at some point in your the life? Area, the area of dressing, I was very, I'm very feminine. Yeah. Yeah, very feminine. But do you have friends that you noticed that they were masculine and they loved yes. to wear more trousers than, than, yes, than, than that? Yes, absolutely. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. This is, this is like actually very enriching for everyone. So the question is this, you know, uh, the question is, is if I will know a lady that would not wear your rings, would not wear makeup, and all those kind of things. And as she began to embrace her femininity, nobody told her to do those things, mm -hmm. and she just began to do those things. What is the challenge of not embracing your femininity as a lady? One of the challenges you have is this. You would, you would, you would do the vibe you will give out to be very masculine. So you will become, let me tell you what you look like. You become mm -hmm. a guy's guy. I don't know what that means. So you become yeah. that girl that is like the guy's guy. So they can because the way you behave, that's you actually, like a guy. No, so they I feel like a guy. Secondary school. So all my classmates had boyfriends. That's why all my classmates had boyfriends. Till I finished secondary school, nobody toasted me. Not one person. I was the one uh -huh. helping them toast people because I was uh -huh. their guy. <laughs> you were their guy. You know, you know. And, and and if you want to date or be married, you can be that person. If you want to date or be married, you can't be the guy's guy. You have to be the girl that the guys are chasing after. You know, the guy's guy, the guy's G, the girls are chasing after. This, this has been very great for all of us. So how do you change? It's a decision to say that, okay, I'm very masculine. And, and let me say something to you. Um, ask yourself this. If I don't change, what pain will I experience? Yeah, what pain will I experience if I don't change? And use that pain to motivate yourself to change. Okay, there are some questions that people are asking. I'm, I'm going to just take one or two questions. If you want to go live, let me know. Someone says, how can I move on? Someone says, how can... Vicky, someone type in the comment section. Vicky, <laughs> who is your guy? I'm your guy. Okay. <laughs> someone says... How do I move on? So the first thing is that be clear on what you want. What do you want to move on from? What do you want to move on to? So one of the reasons why we, Vicky stayed in that last relationship was that she could see her present, but she couldn't see her future. Is that not true, Vicky? She couldn't see it. I mean, when I say future in terms of relationship, so you could see yeah. the future you saw was with this guy. That's why you could not move on from it. So... If you want to move on, one of the things you have to ask you, what am I moving on from? You know, um, <laughs> so, someone is asking me this. I, this is a very funny question. I'm trying to school that. Someone said, how do I stop attracting feminine men? Nancy, if you want to come up on the... <laughs> some of you need to come up on the yes. video because I want to ask you direct questions to help you. So, you know, so if, if you can come up the video, just say, I have a question and I'm ready to go live with you. I will add you, you know. So the first thing is to know what you want to move on from. The second thing is to know what you want to move on to. Then the third reason is to know why you want to do that. If you don't have a big enough reason that can cause you pain, you will not do that. If you don't have a big enough reason that can cause you pain, you, do, you will not do that. So you just, so the reason why people, you know, the reason why people know what to do and never do it is because there's not enough reason to cause them pain. Spyro has joined the conversation. So when he hears who will be your guy, all of a sudden Spyro is laughing and smiling. He didn't say anything all along. You know. All right. All right. So, so, so you know, someone says feminine, Spyro says feminine men. Bawo. You know, I don't know what the, what's going on there. Okay, good. So if you want to ask a question, just put it. Let me know in the comment section. I will add you. Just say I, will, I, will, I want to go live with you. Please make sure that where you are, there's in internet and you have your video on and I will just add you. We're about to round up right now. We're about to round up right now, which is very good. We're about to round up right now. Okay. So much for what you're doing. Okay. You're really changing life. You're really touching lives because, I mean, in, in this generation of art, so many young people are going through so much in different areas of their lives. And the teachings, these sections, they've been really, really helpful. I get a lot of DMs of, you know, people sending, like, testimonies and... It's really helpful. Thank you so much for being a blessing to our We love you so much. Yeah.
thank you. Thank you for saying that. You know, like I always say, you know, the church should be a safe place to help people. And I'm saying it here. I know a lot of you will message me and DM me, but because of it's just me, if I get like a thousand messages, it's a lot for me to handle. What I try to do is to create the forum in our thought services where you can speak into it and this kind of forum where you can come live and share. And I'm just trying to create more time. You know, I'm just trying to create more time. Sorry, sir, we need to you know, I'm just trying to create more time. The, uh, you know, the, the registration of the um the project you 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 want us to work on the one where you register okay yeah yeah which of them now is it for the below 35 or the business it's also business below. okay okay so first of all if you are if you are interested in mentoring for and you are below the age of 35 you need to link up with vicky i'm creating a forum and vicky is one of the leaders that are manning that for me so you need to link up with vicky okay Nobody's willing to go with me live. You know, I'm just going to take some questions from here. I'm going to see some questions from here. Um, someone says, how do I move on from a feminine man that is toxic and very abusive? Peculiar Tony asks that question. How do I move on from a feminine man that is very toxic? The question is that why are you stay in there? The reason why is that people stay in abusive relationship for a good reason. To people outside, it sounds crazy. It sounds stupid. It's time foolish for people stay in abusive relationship because to them, there's, a, there's beauty they experience there. The pain is there, but the beauty they experience supersedes the pain. And that's why they will stay there and it will be just beautiful. It will just be beautiful. So what you have to do is this. If you know that the relationship is toxic, you need to focus on the pain and let the pain get to a very high point where it can actually push you away, where it can actually push you away. That's what I'm talking about. Does anybody have a life question? If you want to ask a life question, just say that. Just say, I want to go live with you and I will, I will, I will challenge you, you know, yeah, I will so challenge you to go live with me. And, said, you know, how, I, 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 how do I yeah. stop attracting have you found someone? on serious men? So says, how do you stop attracting on serious men? I, I guess the reason why you attract on serious men would okay. be, um, this person wants to go live, I'm going to add, yeah um just one minute so I'm, I'm adding the wrong person i want to go oh no okay okay i think oh wow I'm trying to find the person that says I want to go live, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to find the person that says I want to go live. Just a minute. Yeah, I I'm going to do this right now. Um, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, we're just almost there. Uh, okay. Okay. I, I can't find the person that wants to go live. Send me a request if you want to go live. Just send me a request that that would be a better way. I can't add you. So also, how do I stop attracting on serious men? So the... Let me tell you the reason why it's difficult to answer these kind of questions. The reason why is that I need to, have, I need to ask you more questions because I'm not going to give you a blanket answer. That's why I don't like to answer questions that people type. I want to also be in a conversation so that I can really help you. You know, you know I can really help you. Okay, Beauty says, I want to go live with you. Uh, um, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to... Yeah, Pastor Nikki, you want to go live? I would love to hear your story also. Yeah, I want to go live with you. I don't know if I'm the one that is doing it the wrong way. Maybe I'm the one that is not savvy, you know. Yeah, so maybe we should just add to the, yeah. Just one minute, I, I will soon get it out now. Sorry about all of you going live. Uh, for me, that for me, that way, all of you send me, there's a, there's, a, there's a camera button you can just send a request. Ewa told me I've seen yours. I'll look for you right now. I'll look for you right now. Ewa told me. I can't see your request. I can't see your request. Are you checking? Oh, I'm just going to... I'm checking the camera. The camera here. Is that this session? Right. Yes. Yeah. This should be. On my right, yes, yes, 
yes, yes. I, I'm trying to. I think so. Okay, I, I'm going to see. Maybe there's one called Biggie. Let's see if it will work. Let's see if it will work. Yeah, let's I'm see if it will work. Hi, okay. good evening, Pastor Hello. Lee. Hi, Vicky. Good My evening. Name, what is your name, is name and where are you I'm joining from? from Keja. Okay. okay. What is your so, question? What is your comment? My comments? question is this. Um, you're with a guy. He treats you well. Um, he loves God. I mean, everything you would practically want for the guy. God, he has one issue. And the issue is that he has tendencies tendency of cheating. And each time, you know, you confront him, he begs you and he tells you that you should help him solve this problem, that it stems from something that happened in his past, you know. But you're scared that would, would you have to deal with this for the rest of your life. So I really need you to trust it out. Do you move, walk away from the guy or do you stay to actually help him, you know, trash this issue out? Okay. I mean, your case is very different because the guy said he's come clean that he has an issue and he has a problem. The question is this. So what I would say to you is that you need to make sure the issue is solved before you guys make further commitments. That's what I would say to you. You need to make sure the issue is solved before you make further commitment. So the question that, how are you going to help him? You're going to help him. He's going to need some, you know, some maybe counseling or therapy that's going to help him fix it. But you should not go further until that is solved you should not go further until that is solved remember that you're not um you know the only reason why if it's cheating and hiding then it's lying then why are you going to be there but if he says he wants help maybe he's really been honest it might not be honest yes. because some people say this and they're not honest but it may just yeah but it may be honest but that's why i say that what you see is enough for you to break up that's what i'm saying but what you need to do is now to slow down and be like, okay, in case he's honest, let's give him a chance to fix it. But without, so you, yeah. if I, what you can do is to take a break and say, we can take a break and let's sort this out first before we go further, you know, because you don't want someone just abusing and messing you up in the whole process of okay, doing that, me. you know. All right, that's fine. Thank you. All right, all right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you for sharing that because so many of these men, this is what this that's the excuse they always give for cheating. They will now give us work, hand work, work that we'll be doing. They'll be working on them. I feel like if they are, <laughs> if they are not in a relationship, they should actually wait and work on themselves first, though. Yes, <laughs> yes. Good evening, Pastor B. Good, good evening. <laughs> what, what am, I, am I saying what I'm saying? Please, what's your name, name and where are you joining from? you guys from Canada. Hi, Vicky. And thank you for sharing Hi. your story. Honestly, it's very relatable. And my question was to you, um, how how have you been able to... So, so, are you a masculine lady? <laughs> More like boss lady. I feel like a lot of people say that about me. And that's because... Are you a masculine lady? You just as big as a masculine lady. That's like, the, the, reason why, the reason why I'm saying so is that when they say masculine lady, it's not as if, it's not about boss, all those things are jobs. It's the fact that as a lady, you've, you've developed more of your masculine side because of where you're coming from or what you're used to than your feminine side. So the reason I keep saying that is that you cannot change what you don't accept. So if you, can, if you want to sugarcoat it and be like, you know, like, hey, I'm this, I'm that, you will never fix it. You know, so if you're masculine, lady okay and there's nothing wrong with it you must remember there's nothing wrong with it because because the truth is that some people need to do, some ladies to cut their masculine side because as a lady don't call your masculine side you may not be very yeah. aggressive in business and that can yeah. have its own downtime so there's nothing wrong only that you listen you must know your masculine and feminine side and know what part of you to use part time okay yes i so was back gonna to your ask question. i mean Identifying the problem is a thing, but I was going to ask um, how Vicky has been able to successfully tap into our feminine side, because I know that is something that I still struggle with on a daily basis, you know. Sometimes you want to be feminine, you want to be like, oh yeah, do it for me, but the thing is, by default, my mind is like, I, I have it sorted, right? So that was my question. Okay, okay, good. 
Okay, so good, good. So, so Vicky, let's go. I haven't been able to completely tap into my feminine side. As a matter of fact, Pastor B is actually helping me <laughs> through the process. So, yeah, I guess I'm still a working, a working in progress. But Pastor B has been a but, but, the, but, but the progress you've made, the progress you've made, how have you made any progress? What, what, so, so, so the first thing is that, let, let me help out. The first thing is to identify yeah. those areas where you're masculine. And you need to be feminine. So, so, so you're from Canada. What area do you need to be feminine? Well, I think the system does not even particularly help women being feminine. Because, <laughs> yeah, they say everything is 50 50, for example. No, 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 no. no, no. So, so, remember, I know that that happens in Canada, but you need to talk well, about what you want to I think to one of it, the major thing would be probably asking for and receiving help. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So, so, so. It's good. That's how you know. now you know the area. I want to be more vulnerable. Maybe that's what it looks like. I'll be more vulnerable as a lady. Okay. So question is that when you don't ask for help, how do you feel? Um. Well, I think it's because I already have a block in my mind. Like I don't want to be disappointed, so I would not ask for help. Okay. Good. Hmm? So listen to yourself. So what you are really afraid yes. of is the fear of rejection. Yes or no? Exactly. Why are you afraid of rejection? Hmm. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I think it just makes me feel bad when people say no to me. Okay. The, the reason why you're afraid of rejection is because I was going to say something mean. You know me, like, Let me say roast nice. you on this <laughs> No, no, no I'm, not, I'm not roasting you. I'm not roasting you, but I, I want to say this to you. The reason why anybody, not you now, anybody that's afraid of rejection is because the people that are afraid of rejection mm. like control. How do they like control? They want to control the outcome of other people towards them. Yes, sir. Vicky, do you agree, agree with you. that? Exactly. So it's not the fear of it. It's, it's the fact that you like control. So you want to control. So the question is that I want to ask you, Bimbo, have there been some guys that liked you, wanted to date you, and said no? Yes. <laughs> you rejected oh! them? Oh, my God. <laughs> you rejected them? <laughs> How do you think they oh, feel well, right now? Bad, and I hope they've moved on. <laughs> so, 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 people, can you see what I'm saying? I'm only saying that what I said that to let you know that rejection is a part of life, that people will not respond yeah. to me the way I want. So, you know the thing, if I don't want to have the fear of rejection, I must know what my power is. My power is in asking and asking rightly. But I must remember that their response yes. is not my fault because they can respond rightly or wrongly. And I'm not going yes, to sir. get that determine who I am. Yeah, for example, if I didn't mm. pick your video today, no, I know they're like 101 million people trying to be on this so, 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 you know why you didn't feel rejected? Because yes. you gave yourself a story in your mind. That no, no, I'm not rejected. It's just that there's a lot of people. So when you express rejection, why not tell yourself the same thing? And like, oh, no, no, no. You know, he's really willing to help me, just don't have the means. And he cannot say, so he's dodging my calls. Don't tell yourself something that makes you feel pain. This is why people feel painful rejection. They tell themselves things that make themselves feel pain. He has the money, but doesn't want to give me the cost. He doesn't like me. Why do you want to tell yourself something that makes you feel pain? Why not say something like, he's broke? He doesn't want to have meet it and that's why he's not able to help right now what i'll do is to pray for him that god will bless him so that he can help next time that story makes you feel better every time you are disappointed or rejected you tell yourself a story that makes you feel terrible so a guy walks away from your life you'll be like oh yeah when i shared my dreams with him he discovered that it was too small to be in the dream and in the picture he discovered he had the capacity to nurture a woman like this so he thought the best thing was to excuse himself so that the right person can come and doesn't block the entrance. That's a powerful story. And that story can be like, he abandoned and dumped me. But when you say he abandoned and dumped me, how do you feel? So you need to keep telling yourself stories. You know, and you must know something. The difference between David and his brothers was this when they saw Goliath. David gave himself a story of faith and victory. His brothers gave himself a story of defeat and shame and fear. 
The question is that, what story are you going to tell yourself? So how do we do your femininity? We're going to talk about how to do your femininity. So how to do your femininity is very simple. You begin to identify the areas. Then identify the belief. The belief is very important. What belief? Then, I, so you've told me the belief is there's a, you're controlling. I don't want to feel disappointed. Now, you begin to change. So, so you know what I'm doing? You begin to change what you associate with disappointment. So when you ask someone for help and they can't do it, I don't associate disappointment. I associate mercy. I'm like, oh, wow. And Even grace. That's what I associate. Basically. Exactly. So that's why I don't feel disappointed. Then another thing is that you begin to determine then you, so what that would do is to change your perception. Once your perception changes, your emotions will change and everything will change. Yes. Is that helpful Thank at you. all? Is it helpful at all? Thank you so much. All right, all right. Thanks for your time. Can we, can, can we mm -hmm. take the last one before we go today? I'm not sure how to, maybe if you take somebody else. <laughs> I'm trying to take you out. Okay, I think I'm not taking you out from here. Good evening, Pastor B. Sorry for the lighting. <laughs> oh, good evening. Yes. Okay, what is your question? I don't really have a question. I wanted to say that you were talking about masculinity okay. and femininity. When I was growing up, right, yeah. I saw the things my dad did. I saw how he lived with my mom. You know, I saw how he took charge of the house and he still let us be we are all girls so my father is the only man in the house but he wasn't able to be in control and still be a nice dad so he was a fully masculine man but he was a human being as well you know he was soft he was able to merge all that in my would i say in my years of um living i've only come across very few men like that especially the modern day man you hardly see a man like so, that this day. what's your question so what i don't your have question? a question you were talking about what's your women question? being masculine and i'm and i i've come to realize that it's kind of the reality of what we face today right we don't have a choice so to speak like we want to be feminine we want to rest in our femininity we want to embrace our femininity but the way the reality of things is that we just have to, you know, do these things. We want to be soft women. We want to uh, be like the women of the 80s that just stayed at home, you know, took care of the children. But the way it is now, it doesn't really work that way. And also, men are not really trained to okay. show love. Okay, okay, okay. I'm taking your comment and feedback. Okay. So I can let someone else speak. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. So okay. I can get someone else to ask a question. Bye, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just trying to add one more person that has a question. Yeah. Um, okay. Hello. I can't see your video. I don't know where you are. Should I take you out? Hello. Okay. Yes. Hello. Well, we can't I, see do, your I have video. My, do I have to show my face? Miss. By the grace of God, I will. I would love to talk to someone I know. I can see. Don't okay, know. do I you have see. to see my face? Oh, I need okay. to see your face. It has my question and answer. You can see my face, so okay. you can see my face. So okay, my know. question, my yeah. question to you is: Hi, my name is Funso. I'm calling from um, the United States. Hi. My question. Hi. Okay. okay. Hi, Funso. Thank you. I thank like you. Glasses. I'm sorry. Right like now, I'm adrenaline. I'm and your thank you. Thank you. I'm genuinely right now, so I ring. look very untidy. But anyway, my question to you, sir, Pastor B, by the way, I love you so much. Um, I'm a business. I love you. Thank you. So I love you. Thank you for being part of the ministry. I'm I mean, in North Carolina. Where in the United States are you? Yes. Oh, wow. I've yes. been to North Carolina are you, once. Are you coming back to the U.S. anytime soon? Yes, I'm Come, we're coming for NLP conference later. Okay, um, I think perfect, it's about October. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, my question yeah. to you is, um, I do have a business. I'm a business owner, and um, I would like to say I'm a feminine person, but I feel like sometimes um, when I'm handling, I'm handling my business, like a masculine part of me comes out. Like, I just feel like, like my, 
right now my business is kind of the center of my life. So if you if you're if I'm focused on my business every day and it's something that I do habitually, that masculine part of me over time starts to stick with me because uh, I don't even know where I'm going with this. But okay, my question to you. Okay. Yeah, so what's your question? So my question yeah, to you, you yeah. is how can we be feminine if the surroundings around us require us to be strong and require us to be masculine. Okay, good. Good. You're asking a very brilliant question, and this question will help me balance what I'm teaching. You know, in the very I balanced it, but help me more balance it. If you, if you, if there's a fire in your house, I have two kids. At that moment, when there's a hmm. fire, will you be masculine be or masculine. feminine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. What I'm saying about there's nothing wrong with being feminine, but you need to know when your femininity serves you and mm. when your masculinity mm. serves you. So when you go to the business place, the business is looking for your masculinity, mm. bring it out. Mm -hmm. But when mm. you come home, they're not looking for masculinity, mm. they're looking for bring it out. And and the reason even mm. men need to be feminine. Even men, we need the men need the feminine side of us that is caring and is loving and is serving and is wonderful and none of those kind of things. We can come home and be macho and be like, hey, 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 No, no, no. I'm only saying that every man has a masculine and feminine side. Every man has a masculine and feminine side. What I'm saying is that you need to know when it serves you and bring it out that way. So, Funto, you are doing amazing. It's wonderful what you're doing. So, you're bringing out your masculinity to work, and that is beautiful because people are not going to pay you more because you're a lady. They're going to pay you more because you can deliver. But when you now step into a relationship, I don't know if you are, are you married or you're single? Okay, so let's assume that you're dating James, you know, you're dating James. You know, when you come to James, you don't want to address James like a project. You don't want to address James like a colleague. You don't want to address James like this. You need to let James, you know, normally when he gets to the office, like, I'm here to present. Oh, well, I can take that question later. That's for later. Now, look. But when you're with James, James, no, I can't. Please, James, don't even talk to me. I'm so tired. Can you just let me warm my feet? James, can you just carry me up? Mm -hmm. You can't do that in the business place. That's your family yeah. coming out where you're just vulnerable. So it's a balance. It's a balance. It helps. It's a balance. It I, I don't think that helps help. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You should link up with Vicky. Vicky run the multi-million dollar, yes. uh, multi okay. dollar business in Nigeria. And, um, you know, yeah, yes. yeah, you know, she should link up with her and she can, we're having something for, um, for business people. You can join oh, yes, online. It's a two days it. intensive. So you can join online and it's be really good. It's a lot of training for thank the business so space. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's your, what's your Instagram name? It was really nice. And see, Vicky James. Okay. Okay. How do I spell it? It's Vicky James. Okay. It's right there. It's I see right it. there thank you so stuff. much, Just you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Right you. All right. Thank you. I hope you Bye. do too. Bye. Very, Vicky, I think this has been so helpful today. What do you think? Uh, yeah, super. Oh, someone said for <laughs> call me. I don't know who is saying for <laughs> call me. Oh my god. You know, someone said for call me. Anyway, we're going to begin to close this now. Remember that all of you in Ibadan, have it in Ibadan. NLP conference comes up in Ibadan. NLP conference comes up in Ibadan. We're coming to Wembley. We're coming to London, Wembley Arena for NLP conference in London. And we're coming to Canada and the U.S. this year. NLP conference in Canada and the U.S. this year. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, hello. Good. How are you? Good what is your name? Good evening, Vicky. My name is Oyi and... I'm calling it from London. Okay, so okay. I I okay. wanted to um I think I majority my question has actually been addressed. It was more like a balance in the okay. masculine and feminine side. Like how would you be able yeah. to balance it? Because sometimes I feel when I'm actually drifting into my feminine side, the guy probably does something and I'm like, I was trying to be vulnerable. And now he has done it. Mm. Well, let me just pick up my I don't care attitude. I can fix things myself because he's he's probably can I, can I ask you a question? Do you do things for yourself or you do things for people? I think he's both. <laughs> <laughs> I think 
is I think I do things for myself and I also do for people. Okay. So so basically if you're kind, is it for yourself first for or is people. it for people? Listen. You should be kind. Oh yeah. Kind because that's who you are. Exactly. So when people don't accept your kindness, what do you do? No, you change no, and no, become no, no. rude. No. Exactly. No. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You know, there'll be someone on the road that, is, that has his own issues. You know, let me tell you something. When people don't respond to me the way I want, I'm like, oh, wow. It's only God that knows what he's going through that makes him not be able to accept love. I give myself a good story that it's only God that knows what he's going through that makes it so difficult for him to accept love. Well, okay, co continue, continue. Yeah, the last yeah, question. So, so because, let's finish um, this. Yeah, emotionally, I would say I've been through a lot. Well, so, so, so tell me, tell me, tell me exactly how I can help you. What emotion are you struggling with right now? How can I help you? Trusting people, trusting what they actually mm -hmm. say to me. Like, for example, if you tell me, okay. oh. If if a guy even tells me he loves me, you know, man, why does he love me? Like, oh, 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 okay, but, but but I understand that. So so why because, do you struggle with trust? Um, with previous probably with, with previous relationships, it's been them saying, "Oh, they probably love me. They'll do all this," and at the end of the day, it fails. Okay, so so why do you think it yeah. fails? Because they were lying. You, you think they were lying? Did you ask them? You thought they were lying, or they there was, was a change? They were lying. They were lying. Yeah. They were lying. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been with someone before and you hey. said I love you forever and you walked away? <laughs> I just want to ask you. Maybe you have been in that situation where yes. you just want to love you forever and you walked away. <laughs> or were you lying? At that point, no. <laughs> it's actually been feeling. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So why do you think they were lying? So listen, you can explain mm -hmm. how you can walk away. But when someone walks away, you say, oh, they were lying. You're such a great, great judge. Aren't you a great judge? Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Let me tell you why you say they were lying. You don't want to believe that. This is the reason why. You want to deny that something legitimately went wrong in the way they felt about you. And the only thing you had to say was that they just lied. And the truth is that something legitimately went wrong. It might not be your fault. It might not be their fault because things can be, things can happen. It might be something outside them. It can be their fault. It can be your fault. But things really, really happened. And, and that was it. But you don't want to leave to that because that will break your heart to know that maybe they did something. So you don't want to even look at the possibility that something went wrong. So the way you make yourself feel safe, like it's not my problem, it's not me, it's not my story, it's not about me, it's about them, is to say they were lying. Okay. Okay, Pastor, thank you. <laughs> yes, it did. Did this help? I mean, accountable, it did. It did help. You, you know, you know, you know but, but more than that, your tone tells me yes, that you're I in am. a very sad place, actually. Why? What's going on? With emotions, I mean, it's more like, yeah, other things in my life are actually going on well. I'm really not there, but like I can see a progress. But with emotions, no, okay, I can't. So, what's going on exactly? You've told me what is not going on, okay? What is going um, on? Actually, in school, I'm working. School is going yeah. fine. Yeah. Work is going fine. What is not going emotions. well? Emotions. I said what is emotions, not going well? like I, I did say, yes, what is not going well? I can't with get myself what is not going to, well like, what is even not going get well? into a relationship. Because, Why? Why can't you get yourself to get um, into a relationship? Because I, still, I have fears in me. What kind of fears? said it like it's probably not going to work out they're probably lying okay. Be like, okay. uh, watch okay. um l last sunday's sermon where you um where you where you showed us that the clever lies of the any of the devil um uh corrupts our mindsets 
So she already has that yeah. mindset that when people say that nobody can actually love her for real. So when people come to her and they tell her that they love her, she's she already has that mindset that no, you cannot love me. Why do you love me? So maybe if she can actually change that mindset, it would. I think everything you have taught yeah. us from like February up until now, if she actually goes through some of those things, she would. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to ask, have you watched my yes, teachings on with dealing yeah, with major I've spectrum and frustration? Um, majority of the teachings, as long as there's no... Okay, okay. Okay, let me give you a yeah. good example. Let me tell you how to watch the teaching. Don't watch it when you're at work. When you get home, take Byron and pen. Sit down with a book. Write it down. Look, yeah, do you do the assignments when you watch it? Do you do the assignment? You have been writing somewhere. If I ask you, <laughs> can you submit it to me? Yes, I do. I'm, okay, because you know, I've not been in every of the fourth service. Just like... No, no, no. I, 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 it's not really a cheap thing. I'm only telling you the way to okay. get maximum value from something. You know, you can watch a movie. Then watch it again. You're like, I didn't see that. But the reason why is that the first time you watch it, you watch it half-hearted. Then everything you watch, you will probably remember 20%. But if you write it down, you remember about 80%. But back to the conversation. So everyone online, go back to YouTube and have a TV, subscribe and watch Dealing with Relationship Exhaustion and Frustration. You heard Vicky talking about how it has impacted our life, how she was moved. It was very emotional. Sometimes we're just all breaking down. We have crying moments mm -hmm. in the service. We just have to cry, you know, that kind of thing. But, but, the, but this is what I'm saying. So you're emotionally down. So I want to listen to yourself. You're emotionally down because there's no relationship you don't trust and all of those things so i want to ask you why is your lack of relationship making you emotionally down why is my lack of relationship making me emotionally down because i feel as human you get to a point where you actually have to be emotionally accountable to somebody was that emotional ability be a lover partner of course it could be, be funny, like, funny enough with my i have great female friends like great female Friend, yeah, great relationship with my female friends. So, if you friend. have great female friends, why do you still feel emotionally low because you are not in a relationship? Pastor B, okay, like it, I feel it gets to a point in your life, you feel like okay, this is probably the next step. If you're if you have the school of thought of getting married, okay, good, 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 good. So, if it's a next step for you, I, I agree with you. And it's not working out, then you feel frustrated. So if you feel frustrated, what does frustration tell you? Frustration tells you that the way you're doing it is not working well. It's not right. That 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 whatever method you're doing is not working well. So when you're frustrated and you keep doing something, is it that method is not I'm working not, well? I'm Why not, not change even the method? Doing or maybe saying I'm trying pushing out, pushing out. I'm really not pushing out or maybe taking extra effort because I feel what is for okay. me would, as long as I'm steadfast and all, what is for me will probably find its way around me. At times I blame myself because when guys even approach me at times, I probably already have this uh, prejudice in my head. I did think this one is probably coming to bring me more pains. Please go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let me ask you a question. What born are you in your family? Okay. So so your dad and your yeah, mom, what did they say? My mom is my dad. My dad died when I was young, so my mom, yeah, though she's remarried now, but this was her for a long time. Yeah, the reason why I ask is that I can tell that you didn't leave with your dad because you're looking for love from a man. <laughs> okay. Tell me if it's true or not. I can tell. I can tell you're looking for it. So, you look, though you don't have it and you used to not have any, but you're also looking for I can tell you grew up without that kind of love that way. Yeah, my dad died when I was really young. And, 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 and you've always wanted to have that man in your life that will support your dreams. You've always had wanted to have that man in your yeah. life that will always hold your hands. Yeah that you can pour a lot into. And now you don't have it, you feel yeah. as if you are very alone. I actually feel alone. And, you're doing life and I actually alone. feel like I'm doing life alone. You. Yeah. Exactly. So I want to ask you, what do you need? Do you need a <clears throat> father or you need <clears throat> a husband? I need both. 
Okay, good. The reason why is that so did you find yourself have you found yourself attracted oh, to older oh, men before? Must have been. <laughs> yes, I used to be very attracted to older men. Should yeah. I tell you the reason why? Because you were looking for your father. That's all you were looking for. I, I okay. Until now you're still I, I'm just telling you, even till now you're still looking for him. And that's why you're having an emotional breakdown. I know that you're conscious and you're on air, but you're having an emotional breakdown moment because when I'm talking to you, there are flashes of thought, memory, and history going yes, through your I mind. Am. And you're trying to hold back the tears as I, I speak am. because... What? Oh. Let me tell you something. Tell me, tell me your name okay. again. Oh, yeah, let me tell you something. And, and I hope that this will really change your life. I know that you grew up in a place where love was difficult for you and you didn't find love. But if you don't know what love is, you can never identify or receive it. If you don't know what love is, you can never identify or receive it. So I don't think what you need as a man right now, I think is to get close to Vicky, get close to any of our pastors in the UK, get close to myself, and go through a process where you can know what love is. And once you know what love is on the inside, you can begin to identify it and give it to other people as a gift. I wanted to put your hands on your chest. I, I, want, I, want, I wanted to put your hands on your chest. I want, oh, you tap your chest this way, tap it this way, tap your chest this way. Okay, take a moment, take a moment. Take a moment. Take a moment. Oh, you don't cry. Let's spend a minute. I, I want to pray for Oye first of all. I want to pray for her. I want to pray for her. And Lord, thank you for my new friend, Oye. Thank you because the reason for this life, she's the last person, but we didn't know that all the things myself and Vicky were speaking about was just because of Oye. Oye's background looks like Vicky. Her father died early in her life. And thank you for, you know, you're bringing them together because you want to heal her, because you want to minister to her. And I'm praying that not just for her, for everyone here, that the power of God will heal their emotions, heal their hearts, heal their pain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, you know where everyone is. Let your power heal their hearts and heal their pain. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Vicky, Vicky, we're going to close. you speaking to this. Your father died uh, when you were was almost five. When you were five. Yes, sir. When you were five, and, and you struggled all through with yes, fatherly love, right? Yes, one hundred percent. You you also you also wanted to date older men at yes, most sir. times in your life. Yes or no? How did you? What can you tell all you right now ah. that can help her? What changed everything for you? Well, uh, and only I'm giving you a sister in Vicky. I'm giving you a mentor in Vicky. Vicky is going to hold your hands and pull you, you through. Yeah. Uh, how I go through that is basically I believe that I've always believed in God's plans. I believe that everything that happens happens for a reason. I believe there's a reason why. I think it was. I think it's like recently after God has actually brought me to at least close, just a bit close to where He's taking me, that I've now realized that if my father was actually alive, I don't think. I would have been who I am today. I'm not saying that I'm happy that I lost. Vicky, Vicky, can I pause you for a moment? Yes, Pastor. Oye, the reason why you feel the pain of your dad's death, which you will always feel, which is very powerful, is that you're looking at the negative side. You need to look at the positive side. The truth is that you're a very strong lady. If your father was alive, maybe you'll not have the strength. Maybe by now you'll never be in London. Maybe by now you'll be back home. You, you will not be doing anything significant. So the reason why is that as there's also... Look at Vicky. Vicky's running multi-million business right now. Yeah. But if her father was alive, maybe mm -hmm. she would just be in the house, become a daddy's girl. So what the devil meant for evil, remember that God has turned around for good. In the sense of this, the loss of your dad has produced strength in you. If you're going to cry that your father died early, but you must also cry that you are strong. You must also cry that you are successful. You must also cry because the same thing that led to the failures led to your strength. 
the same thing okay. that led to your weakness also led to your strength. Yeah. So I wanted to yeah. focus on the good thing that this has brought to your life and not just the bad thing that's come to your life. And guess what? Yeah. If you didn't have yeah. this story, I would never get to know you. <laughs> if you didn't, look, look at the beauty. If you didn't have the story, there's nobody I've given Vicky to as a mentor today. If you have the story, you will never, go yeah. to, you will never meet Vicky. Just imagine how your story has connected me. And I'm coming to London soon and I hope to meet you. I want to give you a big hug. I want to give you a big hug. But I want to be able to invite oh, you to lunch with me. Pastor B, even me, I've not had lunch with you. <laughs> so just imagine how that gift has blessed all of us today. So this is what I want to tell you. I know it's tough, but always look at the beautiful side of an ugly thing. Always look at what? The beautiful side you, of an ugly Paul. thing. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. So, so link up with Vicky. Look, look, look on my page, you know, on the live. Her name, her name is there. Exactly. Follow her and she's going to support. Thank, Thank you, Oye. Yeah. So I'm going to see you in London. So, Make sure that you message our team and message me so that when you never come to London, you yeah, make I'm sure that we are there to meet up with you. So I owe you a but, hug. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Great. Mm. Vicky, how was today? <laughs> uh, powerful, Pastor B. Powerful. I mean, we've been blessed. I'm sure everyone has been blessed. It, it was powerful. It has been you should do this every evening. <laughs> <laughs> Most people were putting in the comment section, Pastor B, please do this every evening. I mean, we know that's not possible because you have a lot of things to do. And we... Yeah, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of things to do. But if, if this blessed you, please go ahead and post in the comment section. Let me know it blessed you. Tell me this blessed me. Tell me this blessed me. I want to share the link with your friends and get them to watch the video again. We have beautiful stories from Vicky and all, all of that. Thank you so much, Vicky. It was nice to do this with you. I'm hoping on Thursday we can have another session. Just keep, I, I will announce. I know it was even in from two. It said as a joke from one of our staff. It was like a joke, like, Pastor, we do something. And here it is, being a blessing to so many people. Thank you so much for joining today. Everybody, have a good night and God bless you. Next level prayer tomorrow is powerful. Join with your, join with your prayer points, your goals, and pictures of what you desire. Thank you. You can watch this on my page after now and tap